hours in cooperation to do that. Madam President, I yield the floor. the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander. Waiting for more debate on the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, protecting members of certain sexual or gender groups from discrimination by employers. While we wait, remarks now from Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin, who is openly lesbian, as she spoke in favor of the bill yesterday. Mr. President, I've come to the floor this afternoon to talk about a bipartisan effort to advance uniquely American values, freedom, fairness, and opportunity. The Employment Non-Discrimination Act, or ENDA, has at its foundation these core values. It's about freedom, the freedom to realize our founding belief that all Americans are created equal under the law. It's about fairness, about whether lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Americans deserve to be treated just like their family members, their friends, their neighbors, and fellow workers. It's about opportunity, about whether every American gets to dream the same dreams, chase the same ambitions, and have the same shot at success. One year ago this week, the people of Wisconsin elected me to the United States Senate. The citizens of Wisconsin made history, electing our state's first woman to the United States Senate and electing the first out gay or lesbian person to the United States Senate in the history of our great nation. But I didn't run to make history. I ran to make a difference, a difference that would give everyone a fair shot at achieving their dreams. I couldn't be more proud of the bipartisan effort to make a difference with the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. I want to thank and recognize my colleagues, Senators Mark Kirk, Jeff Merkley, Susan Collins, and Tom Harkin for their leadership, 
working across party lines and moving this legislation forward. I take great pride at being a part of this effort. And I think it shows great promise of what can be achieved if we work together in a bipartisan way to get things done for the American people. I also want to take the time to recognize the 55 co-sponsors of this bill, both Democrats and Republicans, who made a commitment to ending discrimination against our fellow citizens simply because of who they are and who they love. I realize that for some, this is not an easy vote. I understand for some, they may believe that it's not good politics. But I want to say that I have a deep respect for those who choose to stand on the side of progress for our country this week. So for those that stand up this week and answer the call for courage, I can say with confidence, your courage will be respected and remembered when the history of this struggle is written. In June, I had the opportunity to speak at the Department of Justice during its Pride Month observations. It was fitting that we gathered in a building that bears the name of Robert F. Kennedy. He became Attorney General at a time of rapid progress in the area of civil rights, progress that thrilled many Americans and frightened others. Kennedy knew, however, that America should be on the side of progress. He traveled to Georgia at the time unfriendly territory for a civil rights reformer to make his first formal speech at the University of Georgia Law School. And he didn't shy away from the Kennedy administration's commitment to equal opportunity. For on this generation of Americans, he explained, falls the full burden of proving to the world that we really mean it when we say that all men are created free and equal before the law. He backed up his words with actions, not only by vigorously enforcing the laws and court orders that advanced the cause of civil rights, but by holding the Kennedy administration itself accountable, demanding that the Justice Department and other government entities prioritize diversity in the workplace. Of course, as much progress as that generation made in fulfilling the promises America makes about fairness and equality, there was plenty left to do for the generations that have followed. Good morning, business. Senators in a quorum call. I ask unanimous consent the quorum call be vitiated. Without objection. And to address the Senate. Without objection. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. You know, we get to do a lot of things as members of the Senate on the floor of this great body. We make great speeches, we have great debates, but periodically from time to time we pay tribute to someone in our state who's done many, many great things for many, many people. And I take this opportunity to do exactly that today on the floor of the United States Senate. Because this Sunday night at 5 p.m., Salem Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, the Reverend Jasper W. Williams, Jr. will be honored for his 50th year of continued service at Salem Baptist Church. I've been privileged to know Jasper for 20 of those 50 years. I've been a member of that church when I heard his sermons. I've heard him preach the gospel. I've heard him teach others. I've heard him save people's lives. I've heard him reach out and I've seen him reach out in the community, bring children together for daycare, to help to mend to the sick and the poor, to do what everything is expected of a church and do so without any expectation of benefit to himself, but the self-satisfaction of serving the Lord and serving his church. He has a great church at Selling Baptist. They have two sites, as a matter of fact, and two large congregations. He succeeded his father as a minister and learned the ministry from his father, went to Salem Baptist Church to preach as a guest on Easter Sunday, 1963, and in November of that year, at the age of 19, 
That church offered Jasper the pastorship of Salem Baptist, and he has been there every day since. His two sons also preach in the Salem Baptist Church community to carry on the tradition of the Jasper Williams family. He's a graduate of Morehouse College, the leading black institution in Atlanta at the Atlanta University Complex, a great citizen of our city, a great citizen of our state, and a great citizen of our country. So I take a privilege at this time on the floor of the United States Senate to pay tribute to my friend Jasper W. Williams, Jr., to thank him and thank the Lord for his service to the people of Atlanta, Georgia, and to the Baptist Church. And I yield back the rest of my time. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander.
this. Madam President. Senator from Massachusetts. Yeah, I ask for uh, dispensing of the reading of the roll. Without objection. Thank you. And, uh, and I ask uh, uh, to be recognized to uh, speak on behalf of uh, uh, the passage of ENDA. Sen Senator is recognized. Uh, and uh, Ma Madam President, I have eight unanimous consent requests for committees to meet during today's session of the Senate, they have the approval of the majority and minority leaders, and I ask unanimous consent that these requests be agreed to and that these requests be printed in the record. Without objection. Thank you. Um, I rise today in support of equal treatment for all Americans. The Employment Non-Discrimination Act, or ENDA, is aimed at protecting all lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender Americans from workplace discrimination based on their sexual orientation or gender equality. All Americans deserve to be free from discrimination in the workplace and ENDA is a crucial step to ensuring equal treatment. I have been a co-sponsor of the Employment Non-Discrimination Act every time it was introduced in Congress since the bill was first drafted in 19. Two years later, in 1996, I was one of only 67 members of the House of Representatives to vote against the Defense of Marriage Act. That seems like ancient history now, so long ago. And I am proud to say that the Employment Non-Discrimination Act has its roots in my home state of Massachusetts. Back in 1994, it was originally written by two titans of Massachusetts politics, Congressman Gary Studs in the House of Representatives and Senator Ted Kennedy here in the United States Senate. We're coming up now close to 20 years uh, since those bills were introduced first in the House uh, and in the Senate. Uh, and while neither of these visionary leaders are with us today, their tireless work for equality lives on. They helped pave the way for this debate by challenging the pervasive view that LGBT people are not and do not need or deserve the same legal rights and protections uh, as everyone else. We uh, began debating this actually in the Massachusetts state legislature uh, in the mid-1970s. Uh, and in Massachusetts in the 1970s, a law like this could not pass. Uh, but in 1989, Massachusetts became the second state in the nation to adopt a law prohibiting discrimination based on sexual orientation in employment public accommodation, housing, and credit services. In 2004, Massachusetts became the first state in the nation to extend marriage equality to same-sex couples. Massachusetts is again paving the way with the passage of one of the first transgender equal rights laws in the nation. The people of Massachusetts know that when some of our citizens are being discriminated against, the liberty of all people is diminished. From schoolrooms to boardrooms, members of the Massachusetts LGBT community have made stunning progress towards full legal equality. And simply put, equality works in Massachusetts and it works for Massachusetts by ensuring that LGBT individuals have the same employment protections as everyone else we have made the light of liberty in our state burn 
even more brightly. And the same basic civil rights protections that have been extended to LGBT residents of Massachusetts should be extended to LGBT people across the entire nation. For the last two decades, uh, the people of Massachusetts have supported a national employment non-discrimination law because we cannot allow our nation uh, to have one standard in states that pass laws that protect people from discrimination uh, and to have other states that do not. Uh, we cannot have the careers of people, the dreams of people, uh, to be in fear of prosecution as people move from state to state. This should be a national standard which we establish, a standard that ensures that every person knows that wherever they are in the United States of America, that they are going to be protected, that, uh, they, were, that they were created uh, by God and that they have a right to these protections um, in uh, every state in our country. Today, the number of states that have adopted their own anti-discrimination laws uh, are basically increasing. And I applaud the progress that has been made to advance the cause of equality on the state level. However, 29 states still do not have these critical protections in place, and that is 29 states too many that still refuse to provide those protections. In the end, Madam President, it comes down to this. We should treat others as we would like to be treated ourselves. The LGBT community is made up of our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, and our families. And we all deserve the same rights, regardless of who we are, regardless of where we live in our great nation. That is what is truly exceptional about America. Despite our challenges, we remain the brightest beacon of freedom, opportunity, and equality in the world. Madam President, I have a great deal of pride in our nation and our people. I truly believe that despite our differences, we can come together with one voice to say that discrimination is wrong. So let us here this week all stand together for a future without discrimination in the workplace. It will make America more productive. It will make us more wealthy. But most important, it will ensure that we have removed that stigma of discrimination that puts fear into the hearts of American citizens unnecessarily. Uh, this is a huge historic week uh, that we are uh, about to see unfold in our nation's capital. Uh, and, uh, and I pray that we can pass this bill and send it over to the United States House of Representatives so that we can have this full debate in our nation for equality for every person who lives within our boundaries. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Under the previous order, the Senate stands in recess until 2.15. So the Senate's been debating a bill that would protect certain sexual and gender identity groups from discrimination by employers. The end of legislation would also apply to labor organizations and employment agencies. A vote on final passage of the measure could come later this week. Senators taking a break now for their weekly party lunches. They will be back at 2.15 Eastern for more debate on the end of bill. You can see live coverage of the Senate when lawmakers return right here on C-SPAN 2. Very quickly, before we return to programming, the Associated Press reporting Oklahoma Republican Senator Tom Coburn has been diagnosed with a recurrence of prostate cancer. He's seeking treatment. He's a survivor of a 2011 bout with the disease and, according to a spokesman, is undergoing further evaluation and treatment. This is his fourth cancer diagnosis. He is expected to return to work in the Capitol as soon as next week. Earlier today, we spoke with a Capitol Hill reporter watching the progress of the end of bill as it makes its way through the Senate. Sungmin K.